So I have this integration I built and it isn't working. Here, I wanna show you the problem. So in the service operation monitor, and here's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to send a text message through Twilio, but the send is failing. Now, in the service operation monitor, it says, let's take a look, error message, 401 unauthorized. So Twilio doesn't like my credentials. And in the routing, let's take a look there. Let's make sure we have all that configured correctly. We see basic auth, we see the user ID and the password. It looks like it's all set up to me. So the question is, what am I doing wrong? Now, troubleshooting this type of issue can be challenging. We could turn up the log level, but you know, if we turn up the log level, it wouldn't show us much more than what we're already seeing here. Well, actually, it would show us a lot more of irrelevant details. You know, sometimes I wish I could eavesdrop on the server to server communication. I mean, something's clearly wrong and I'm pretty sure I could figure it out if I could see what PeopleSoft is sending to Twilio. For example, is there something wrong with the HTTP headers? Well, yes, probably the authorization header, but what? Or is the problem with the request body? And Twilio's returning response, but what is Twilio returning? I mean, perhaps Twilio is telling me what's wrong, but PeopleSoft isn't passing those hints along to me. So here's what I wish I could do. I wish I could inject, inject myself right into the middle of the server to server conversation and listen. I want to be, as they say, a man in the middle. And that's what I want to show you in this episode. I want to show you how to configure your own man in the middle proxy. Now, first, we need an eavesdroppy proxy server. Second, we need connectivity. Now, integration broker must be able to connect to the proxy, which usually means the proxy must be in our data center. Common proxy favorites are Fiddler and MITM, man in the middle. MITM is popular in data centers because it runs headless on Linux or Windows and renders results in a web browser. So we can install it unattended in a data center. Fiddler Classic, on the other hand, runs in a Windows session, so it's more likely to run on a remote desktop, like what we have here. So let's walk through these steps to install and configure Fiddler and hopefully resolve our integration issue. Now, regardless of the proxy chosen, MITM, Fiddler, or any other proxy, here are the steps. Number one, download and install a proxy. Number two, configure integration broker to use the proxy. And finally, number three, restart the web server. So let's start with the download. Let's see, in a new window, let's try download Fiddler, and we want classic. Download and install Fiddler Classic, perfect. And how do we plan to use it? We're going to use it for, you see integration, web service, perfect. Uh, that's me, what state, per, oops. And yes, accept, download for Windows. It'll take just a second to download. Oh, that's perfect. Wait for the blue circle to go away. And we can launch it. The install program takes just, I mean, a minute or so, not very long at all. <clears throat> okay, and we can go ahead and close the install program and launch Fiddler. Now, Fiddler is a local web development proxy designed for troubleshooting local web development. So at this time, it's sending all local traffic, meaning my, every one of my web browsers has been reconfigured to route traffic through Fiddler. I don't want that. That's not why we're here. We're here for the server. In fact, I don't need these sessions either. So what I did is I stopped capturing traffic. I deleted all of the sessions that were already out there, the requests. Next, I wanna tell Fiddler to decrypt traffic and decrypt local communications. So I'm gonna to go to the HTTPS tab under options and tell Fiddler to decrypt traffic. Now, as you can see, it says, whoa, scary, because this is. Uh, first thing it's gonna say is, hey, you know what? Uh, Fiddler uses an untrusted certificate. You might say a bad certificate. And Fiddler will import that certificate into all of the local browsers for me into my local workstation's trusted certificate store. No, I don't wanna do that. That's not why I'm here. But I do want PeopleSoft to be able to pass traffic through Fiddler. So I am going to import that certificate into PeopleSoft to get PeopleSoft to trust that certificate temporarily 
in a development environment. So let's go ahead and export that root certificate to the desktop, fiddlerroot.cer, perfect. Let's keep that in mind. And while we're here, I wanna go into the connections tab. And what we see is that Fiddler is listening on port 8888. We can change that here if we want to. And I also wanna point out this other checkbox here, allow remote computers to connect. Now, what I mentioned was that we need to have connectivity. So I might have my PeopleSoft web server running on Linux somewhere. And then I have here, I've got a remote desktop on a server in the same data center. So they can connect to each other, I can ping them, I can map drives between them, but can that external web server communicate with Fiddler? Well, right now, the answer is no, unless we check this box. Now, if I check this box, external servers can then route traffic through Fiddler. But as it says here, warning, meaning, don't do this because again, it opens up another vulnerability. Now in our case, we're using fully self-contained PeopleSoft instances. We use for our training instances. For each student that attends one of our training classes, we issue them a server just like this, fully self-contained development workstation. So in this case, I don't need that because I have my web server running right here with Fiddler. Now, Fiddler is going to be listening without this checkbox. Fiddler is listening on 127.0.0.1, which is the local host IP address. So keep that in mind as well, because we need that for the configuration step. Okay, so the next step would be to go into integration broker, perform configuration, as well as import the certificate into the PeopleSoft certificate store. And then finally, to restart the web server. Now we can do the two configuration steps in any order. We can import into the certificate store first, or we can configure the proxy server first. It doesn't matter because uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna restart the web server and then those settings will take effect. Now I'm gonna go into do the proxy configuration first. And the reason is because the proxy configuration is going to tell us where the certificate store is located. So I've gone to integration broker. So people tools, integration broker, configuration, gateways. And I'm going to press gateway setup and tell integration broker who I am. And then we'll go into the advanced properties and let's search for proxy. Awesome. So you can see the two lines that come from the template. I'm going to copy those two lines, uncomment them and set our host. Now, in this case, we're listening on the home address 127.0.0.1. Uh, that's because we did not check that box. Can you use host names here? If I check the box to allow remote computers to connect, then I could use a host name here. But in my configuration for Fiddler, I said only listen on the local host, the home address. And the port number we saw in Fiddler was 8888. Okay, so while we're here, let's look for PS key. PS key is the certificate store. And we see the path for the certificate store. This is important. We're going to need this later. Now I wanna show you, I have that open already. I have the key store location. Now the key store is in your PIA config of your PeopleSoft, your WebLogic web server. Now this happens to be a standard Palm native install on Windows. So your location, if you're using a standard Palm native install would be very similar to mine. Of course, you might have a different user ID. Now I also want you to notice as I prepared, I made a backup copy of my key store. Two reasons. Number one, if I fail, if I mess up, I want to be able to quickly restore. Number two, we're importing an untrusted certificate into the key store. Danger. This is bad. We're doing it for development purposes only, and we're doing it in a dev environment temporarily. When we're done, we're going to restore the key store. So I have a backup copy. So when I'm done, you know, perhaps I could take the one that has Fiddler certificate rename it and then reset and then restart my web server again so that we're no longer trusting that untrusted certificate. Okay, so next step is to run the key manager tool and it is in your PIA bin. So your WebLogic web server PIA bin folder. And again, I'm using a standard Palm Windows install, native install. So your install location for PIA bin could be very similar to mine. And then the next step is to run a command window as administrator. Now I'm running mine as administrator because that's my configuration. You may not need to run as administrator. Again, it depends on your configuration. And I want to change directory 
to the pia bin. So I can run ps key manager. Oops. And I want to install, excuse me, import a key a certificate into a key store. What key store? Oh, let's see, we've got that over here. And it's called PS key. Perfect. And our password. Shh, don't tell anyone. And it says, what do you want to use for the alias? How about Fiddler? And then it says, where is your certificate stored? Well, we exported that. We exported it to the desktop. So it should be in C users, OPC, desktop. And it's called Fiddler root.cr. Perfect. A nice tab autocomplete there. And let's see, it's going to list out for the certificate here. And it says, do you trust the certificate? Now, interesting when using PS Key Manager, when I import a root and then an intermediate and then a certificate, it's already got the pieces necessary to trust the certificate in the certificate store. And it just says certificate imported. This is different. What PS Key Manager is telling us is, hey, this is, this is not a good certificate. Are you sure? We're going to say yes. Yes, I'm sure. OK, back to the key manager or the gateway properties. Let's go ahead and press the OK button. OK, here. And it's going to take a minute for integration broker to or the integration broker and the web server to start. So PS restart PS admin. Let's do a shutdown. And are you sure? Yes. And then let's go ahead and boot our web server. And again, that'll take a couple of minutes. And let's make sure that the web server is really up. We'll try a quick login. Oh, that's perfect. OK, so PeopleSoft should now be routing all communications through Fiddler. Let's find out. So I happen to have an App Engine program running here with or an App Engine all set up uh, to send that request through Fiddler onto Twilio. Let's find out. I'm going to press the run button. And what I expect to see here on the left hand side is I expect to see the connect request and then the standard HTTP communication. Now, that's because we chose to decrypt. If you do not choose to decrypt, then all you would see is the connect request. Uh, OK, so we see the tunnel request. And we should see over here when it's all said and done. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, Twilio is using a, a wildcard cert. Uh, this is actually coming back from Fiddler saying, hey, the certificate error. Uh, is that OK? Hey, and we're going to say, yes, that's OK. Now, if you don't want to see this message, you can actually turn this off so that, you know, if you have Fiddler running, maybe unattended, uh, but capturing all of this, you know, obviously you don't have somebody there to press the yes button, but I do. And oh, well, look at that. I do have a 401 unauthorized. We can look at the details so we can see the this is the response that's being sent back, a text request. Your account SID, your auth token was incorrect. Hmm. OK, well, if we look at the at the headers from the request, we can see the authorization headers, authorization basic. Basic is really just base64 encoded. So we could go ahead and, hey, let's do this. Let's copy the head, ooh, copy value only. And let's go to base64 decode. And let's just try a quick decode here of the basic auth. And let's see what integration broker is really sending. OK, so look for the colon. That's the separation between the user ID and the password. Oh, excuse me. There it is. There it is. There's the colon. So this is the user ID. OK, uh, let's see. I'm going to check that against my credentials. That's only part of it. Oh, that's not my whole user ID. Well, let's go into the service operation and let's take a look. Now, we have to reload this page because we restarted the web server. And this was JSM something, Twilio, perfect. And then we'll look at the routing and the WS security. Oh, you know. 
That's the same thing we saw over here. D5A. D5A. I'm trying to type something. You know what happened? We ran out of characters. So the problem is with my username and the routing. The problem is the routing username field is too short to hold my complete username. And the workaround for that is part of our Integration Tools three-day course. So be sure to register to learn more. Now, do you have other integration broker debugging tips? Be sure to share them in the comment section. Now, at JSM Pros, we teach people tools concepts like this every week. Be sure to check out our website to see what we're offering next. Or here's an idea. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter feeds to receive updates every time we post a course. Or do you have a team that wants to learn more? Give us a call and let's get something scheduled. Now, before we go, I have a question for you. Do you have a topic you'd like us to cover in a future soundbite? Let us know by sharing your idea at soundbites.jsmpros.com. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more content. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.